I'm going to call the CPC meeting to order at 7.33. Um, and this meeting is being recorded. We have... Let me get the agenda. I don't have an agenda. Uh, I got one. Um, thank you. We have uh, consultants in Danielle. Yes, are they here? They are. Um, why don't we uh, Why don't we hear what they have to say and uh, move into our regular meeting? We're we're still within time, so we have nothing time certain. Great. Okay. So thank you. I just wanted to just introduce our consultants from Kleinfelder. Um, Adria and Cecilia are here. Uh, Joe Greasy is also here. Our LA director. Um, can everyone hear? Um, okay, great. Um, thanks. They're here to just uh, give an overview of the study that they've been working with us on um, with the DPW, um, you know, as far as uh, wastewater planning, and uh, they're here to share where they are with this and to uh, have a bit of discussion. So I'll, I'll turn it over to, um, to either Cecilia or Adria. Oh, Cecilia, you need it. Unmute yourself. All right, here we go. I couldn't. I didn't know if I was able to uh, unmute myself or not. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Danielle, for the intro. Um, as Danielle mentioned, I'm Cecilia Carmona with Pridefelder. I'm here with me and also Adrian Victor. Um, we've been tasked by DPW and Mr. Parisi on doing a analysis of potential growth once once an end sewer comes to North Reading. So, um, Adria will walk us through the scope and what we're tasked to do and what the goals for this meeting are for us in order to seek your input on how to finalize, finalize our findings. Danielle, I'm going to ask you for a favor when people comment because everyone seems, looks very tiny in my screen. If you could identify them so I can take proper notes and figure out who's speaking, please. Yes. And actually, at the All right, same time, identify yourselves when you ask questions. That would be great. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. We'll do. All okay. right. Go ahead, Adria. Are you allowed to share your screen? I hope so. <laughs> yes, you should be able to. And you all see my screen now? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. All right, so as Cecilia mentioned, I'm Adria Victor. I'm the project engineer on this effort um, that we're working with um, Joe on. With the municipal wastewater system financial assessment study, and we'll go through you know the scope of work and where we're at now. Um, we'll go through some project background, the project area, um, some key definitions. You know, we're we're working with some of these definitions um, day to day. We know that they'll be new for some people, so we'll walk through those. Um, we will talk about. The part one and part two um, of this analysis, so those are kind of distinct parts. Part one is mostly the Kleinfelder scope, it's the um, you know betterment assessment as well as the water and wastewater capacity assessment and debt repayment. Part two is property evaluation and new growth, and this is mostly our sub consultant FXM. Um, and then we will go through um, the final steps for this analysis. So some background, um, the primary goal of this is to determine how the town will pay for the proposed municipal wastewater project um, and understanding what financing mechanisms will be needed and used um, over the long term. So I just mentioned the different parts and you know what those include. So part one includes some GIS mapping. So I'll show you the you know the project area in just a second, uh, water usage analysis, wastewater capacity analysis. Um, a betterment methodology and assessment, and as well as debt repayment. Um, part two is you know new growth, the new growth assessment, uh, a build out analysis based on that new growth, uh, any zoning recommendations that are required, and um, a survey of uh, businesses and property owners you know along the proposed sewer route, and then we'll go into next steps. This so meeting this is, is being recorded. Okay. Um, so this is the project area, um, you know, along Concord Street, Park Street, Main Street, um, you know, as, as well as portions of North Street and Lowell Road. 
So the you know the green line shows the proposed sewer, as, and the pink shows kind of the parcels that abut that sewer line. So it's um, this you know shows the proposed area just for not the expansion area. So looking at that proposed area, this is the distribution of parcels by type. So this is residential, you know, use codes. Um, commercial, industrial, and exempt. And so exempt are um, properties that are owned by the town, by the state, or federal. So, you know, it's a very small portion, but um, seeing this, you know, we're talking about nearly 80% of the properties abutting sewer being residential. So I, I mentioned that we're doing a water and wastewater capacity analysis. So the town is currently permitted for 500,000 gallons um, per day, average daily flow. This is wastewater flow to GLSD, so that's Greater Lawrence Sanitary Sewer District. Um, so we are estimating wastewater flow using current water usage. So, you know, that's a pretty standard um, calculation, but we're working off of current water usage. And we will be evaluating, you know, what capacity remains based on that permit number. And at this point, this doesn't take into account new growth. We will we're, we'll revisit this, um, you know, further on in, in the presentation. Um, but at this point, we're kind of we're evaluating um, where the town is with respect to that 500,000 gallon um, permit number. I also have a note here that um, Wright Pierce, the you know um, consultant that's working on the sewer design did a capacity analysis that, you know, we're referring to as well. So um, we're kind of confirming, corroborating their numbers. So here I'm going to get into some kind of specific definitions and hopefully I can kind of um, boil those down for you. And certainly Cecilia or Joe, if you feel like I'm not hitting the mark, um, jump in. But this is a, you know, very legally used definition of a betterment, um, a special property tax that is permitted where a property within a limited and its determinal area receives a special benefit or advantage from the construction of a public improvement. So this is just to say all the parcels that we saw, that all the pink parcels abutting the proposed sewer will be assessed a betterment, um, you know, because now that those properties would um, be improved based on their access to sewer. Um, there's kind of two different ways to think about how the money gets split up. Um, the sewer special assessment, the cities and towns may assess all or a portion of the cost of sewer system plant and facilities. And so there's general benefit facilities, and we'll, we'll, I'll, we'll show a breakdown of this. Um, hopefully the visual will help you. Um, but this includes pumping, general benefits include pumping stations, um, kind of the trunk sewer lines, force mains. Um, special benefits are, you know, your gravity sewer mains that are just serving the abutting property. So this is just, um, you know, benefits for those specific properties and not maybe the whole town as a whole. So hopefully this visual um, kind of helps you break that down. So we're working off of understanding a total project cost, and that cost is used to determine how much the betterment assessment will be. Um, so it's based on, you know, a portion of that total cost. Um, so the total total project cost, um, less any other revenue sources, um, will be the eligible cost of a waste product project. And then that is further broken down into what I just mentioned, uh, general benefits, uh, so the pump, you know, pump stations, uh, force main, and the special benefit, which is just the gravity sewers. Um, the select board will vote to determine how these costs are divided, uh, but this kind of shows you the, the breakdown of, you know, where the funds are going and how they um, fit together. Adrian, can I just interrupt you for one second? I just want to check our waiting room to be sure that there is no one waiting to come in. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. Go on. It's all set. Can you hear us, Adrian? 
I can hear you now. Can you hear? Yeah. Are we talking to me? Sorry. Okay, we're just saying that we're, we're all set. There's no one in the waiting room. You can continue. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Let me go on to the next one. Okay. So this um, is kind of just another way of saying what I've previously said. Um, the special benefit still these are the pink parcels, the budding, the town and wastewater collection systems. Um, the general benefit facilities are, you know, all residents would, would benefit from this. So this is just the wastewater conveyance and as well as land acquisition and administrative fees um, associated with the project. So um, the recent revision to the sewer bylaw that I believe was in June allows for this cost, you know, the split of, of these costs to be determined um, by the select board vote. Um, so this kind of goes a little bit further. Um, part of the, the general benefit can be, you know, ultimately assessed as privilege fees um, or as betterments. So this is um, facilities that um, proportion of general benefit facilities costs assigned to parcels along the proposed collection system, and then the privilege fees are assigned to future users. So these are that you know those that would connect later on, you know, after the initial part of um, you know the initial betterments were assessed for the first properties. So I keep saying betterments. Um, we're evaluating three different betterment methodologies um, for determining, you know, the wastewater, the estimated wastewater contribution, as well as you know the estimated cost. So these, the, the three methods are listed right here. The water use method. So this is based, you know, primarily just on um, historical water use for the properties. Um, there's the Title Five current build method. So this is based on the existing building footprint. Um, and use type, so you know, Title V has very specific flows that are associated with those, and you know, we're using those based on what is currently built and currently zoned. We also are evaluating um, Title V full build-out methods. So this is looking at the parcel size and flow projections based on current zoning. So what would be allowed based on what what is currently zoned. Um, for each of these methods, we're establishing a cost per sewer unit, and you know the total cost will be dependent on how many sewer units there are. So the more sewer units there are, um, the less the betterment assessment you know per each unit is. We are also evaluating debt repayment. So this is analysis on the 30-year general fund annual service obligation. This includes a payment schedule. Um, we're currently evaluating worst case scenarios. So this is, you know, not including any grants or other available funding, um, but it does include an estimate of the betterment assessment. Once we get to final, and we'll talk about this, it will include a comparison with the net property new growth projections as part of part two, and analysis on the additional potential revenue sources as well as a calculation of the return on investment. I'm hopping into part two. Um, this is FXM. Uh, so, can you so ask for a second? Do, sure. do, we, do we want to take questions on part one before we start part two? Sure. Or, Danielle, I'll leave it up to you. Do you want to keep on going, or are there any questions so far? Does the CPC have any questions? Any questions? Warren? Yeah, just um, can you hear me okay? Tell them who you yeah. are. Okay, this is Warren Pierce. Uh, my, my question is when they, when you do the historical water use, I'm assuming that you would be looking at the winter months use historical in order to eliminate the irrigation part of it since, since that part, you know, for people watering the lawns and filling their pools and things like that, to give you a more realistic idea of what the youth what the real use is during that uh, on a daily basis. We looked at five years worth of data. Yeah. Pink. Specifically for that to flush out peak and have a realistic assessment of, of the consumption. Okay. But it's just that if you... Uh, it still would be weighted. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be... It's definitely going to be weighted towards... Uh, if you, especially depending on... on 
how much how many people will have big lawns in that neighborhood. So my suggestion would be that if you're going to use five years of data, take take the uh, winter months, um, take the the actual use during the winter months as a far better example of what what they're actually using, what's actually going back into this a sewer system, as opposed to what's being poured on the ground to water the grass and fill the pools. I have a question to my. This is Dave Redloff. Is on the the betterment if you have. Can you say your name again? Sorry. Dave Redloff. CPC. Thank you. Here. Okay. Thanks. Um, so on the on the betterment with uh, the, the way it's it's uh, enacted with someone that just installed a brand new septic system because they had to. There there is no option for sewer. What? How is that being? Structured, or do you have a structure to that or a recommendation for that? I'll defer to Joe, but from a standard practice, everybody gets to set the betterment. The, the town may elect to do department payment or set up different ways of collecting, uh, but from a standard analysis, everybody gets to set the Everybody that abuts gets to set the betterment. Joe? Yep, <clears throat> that's correct. Uh, in, in this study, it's, it's just everybody that is fronting it will have access to the sewer and uh, we'll, we'll get a betterment. But as we go forward and if this project um, you know, goes forward, then we can look at other options if that is a specific situation for a few parcels. I mean, perhaps if, if someone, it, it's eminent that the system's either going to expire or there's something to do with the Board of Health, uh, there, there needs to be some town uh, coordinated type temporary measure that they could recommend or mm -hmm. I get it again it's, it depends if you're five years away you really can't do that but I mean if it's something within a year it just seems like to spend twenty five thirty thousand dollars to put in a septic system um, it's a yes, little weird no. and then get a betterment and then get hit with a better yeah sure. Warren Pierce um, in my experience, what, what, what a lot of towns have done, what some towns have done, is if there's a, a Title V problem where a system is um, has a technical failure but could be could continue to operate, there was a, a special dispensation given to them so they could continue to operate that system until the sewer was in. I think that's what you're talking yeah. about. Andover did that, and a few other towns that I know of did that. Um, but if it looked like, I mean, if you were looking you know, 10 years out, of course, you wouldn't want to do that. But if you're only looking two or three years out to, for the sewer to be, to get by that property, they would give them, they would allow them to maintain, do maintenance on the existing system uh, until the sewer came in. I think that's the kind of thing mm -hmm. you were talking about. Other well, towns right. have done that. But I think, I think we're getting far afield here. They're trying to do an analysis of the system for everybody is going to be in the system at the beginning. And then we, yeah. once that's done for a betterment cost, then the town goes back and looks to see the individual person's issue. So right now they're just doing this is an an analysis and oh I get informa I get that. information I'm from assigning the right. betterment per right. property. No, I totally get that. I was just saying his thought then in the analysis, or it could be in the zoning one here, you know, and how we address and right. start it that, up. That's just, that's yeah. Because yeah. what I'm afraid of too is, is does that stop development Correct. during this period? A couple couple of years because someone wants to build something. Uh, Right. a business but they can't connect yet and their option is to put in an expensive system far more expensive it's if it's right. commercial than then um you know residential system so does yeah. development in north reading just stop for two to three years right. until we get a you know plus so right we get a sewer and that you could be facing that if you're an owner i wouldn't mm -hmm. put in a big expensive system when i knew i could do that it's just something i guess to think about yeah that gets back to part two maybe a little bit too I'm, I'm good though. Any, any other questions? Okay, I think you're, you have the floor for part two, please. Thank you. All right, thank you. <sighs> okay. okay, all right, so I'll go through each of these, but just in general, we're gonna talk about um, new growth assessments, um, the build out analysis, and um, the survey of business and property owners. So this is, you know, mentioned in the scope of work, but there are two significant financial benefits from construction of the sewer. 
So this is property value increases for property owners abutting the proposed sewer and new growth tax dollars for the town. So, you know, this translates to new growth analysis for FXM and, you know, the questions that were that they're going to be able to answer with their analysis is what is the potential new growth? What are the potential financial benefits related to this growth? So they, you know, looked at property sales in North Reading um, and compared to similar nearby communities that are both sewered and non-sewered. And, you know, they're assessing potential increase in value of those properties as well as um, just net new growth. So based on that new growth, um, they completed a build-out analysis in the proposed sewer area. So this is looking at both commercial, industrial, and residential properties. They are using current zoning regulations and current market demand. So they want to be able to determine, you know, based on this build-out analysis, um, can the proposed sewer area accommodate the amount of estimated future development with current zoning? So if not, uh, they are tasked with making recommendations on the zoning regulations to allow for optimal development. They also completed an electronic survey, um, which I believe actually is ongoing. So, um, and we're trying to understand, you know, from directly from businesses and property owners how you know how they feel um, sewer impacts them and gauge their interest in sewer, you know, in the future. And so I've, I've highlighted two of the questions that are included in the survey, but it's just understanding from them, you know, is, do they think that the highest and best use of their property is limited um, without sewer? And do they think that they have a disadvantage um, related to, you know, other areas nearby that do have water and sewer service, um, even compared to some of the areas in North Reading that have, you know, the end of your um, sewer service? So those are, you know, questions that are being asked and, um, you know, by FX Services Service. So, um, you know, FXM has, you know, nearly completed their work. Um, there will be a final report that will be a compilation of part one and part two. You know, at this point, um, you know, we're working with the town to get their input on decisions that they need to make on, on both assessments. But we'll be finalizing the betterment assessment, um, and we'll be calculating return on investment, comparing new growth projections and debt service based on um, FXM's work. And this is where I'm revisiting the water and wastewater capacity. So we're assessing water and wastewater demand based on the projected new growth. So we need to understand with respect to you know your current in a municipal agreement with Andover, where you have a maximum daily water demand of three million gallons per day, you know how all that new growth fits into that, um, as well as you know the the five hundred thousand dollars, five hundred thousand gallons per day that you're currently permitted with GLSD. So understanding how you know the proposed growth fits into that as well. So I, you know, mentioned what the outcomes are, but I'm trying to highlight them here very specifically. So as part of part one, you know, we'll be um, distributing maps of the proposed sewer area and expansion area. We'll be looking at the completing the water usage analysis, including the evaluation of the intermunicipal agreement, um, and updated wastewater capacity analysis, including any projected new growth, uh, the betterment assessment with the selected method. So this will be you know, a dollar per sewer unit um, for, you know, different types of parcels. And we'll also be finishing debt repayment analysis, including the return on investment calculation. Part two will include the assessment on new growth. So this is the potential for commercial, industrial, and residential property value increases and the associated net new tax revenues. Um, the build-out analysis will look at the projected new growth and this will ultimately give us a number of, you know, increase in dwelling units as well as square footage of commercial and industrial growth. Um, if there, if it's necessary, um, donating recommendations will be included to, you know, if, if to account for this new growth in the proposed sewer area, if there's any hindrances there, and then we'll include um, the survey results. 
So at this point, um, I know, Danielle, that we wanted to talk um, about the potential for new development within the proposed your area, understanding the priority, priorities for the remaining water and wastewater capacity, you know, once those are established, and um, the vision for mixed use development, um, certainly in the Main Street corridor. Thank you. Um, I, 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 thanks for giving us that overview, um, thank you, and Cecilia, of, uh, of the work that's being done. Um, I think that as you know, as part of uh, the the ongoing work, um, I, there are going to be, I think, a couple of discussions with, with the CPC. And at this point, it would, um, you know, one of the things that we'd like to get some input on is um, the kind of the, the CPC's vision for how the Main Street corridor should should look. And you know, what we have um, you know provided and kind of used as a starting point, the master plan um, that we completed in 2020, um, thought this would be a good opportunity to just in, in light of just in con with the context of the of these, you know, outline of the study that's being done, just have have an opportunity to have some discussion about um, how the CPC would, would hope the time of development would proceed in the town, um, especially on do this project. So we would. Do you have any thoughts or feedback about that? Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, this is uh, Dave Rumlock again. So, uh, so, I mean, I think there, the, the study that we did that recommended the mixed use on, on Main Street, we, we I think we're all in support of that. And at that time, I don't think, I think the sewer crept up really quickly on the on the heels of that, so this is a perfect storm in my opinion. Um, but I think one of the questions in the in the zoning analysis that might become some output here. So along Main Street or in the diagram that showed kind of the coverage area, in it mentioned seventy plus percent residential. Seventy nine. Yeah, seventy nine. Thank you. Uh, what is the opportunity, and that's maybe what they're going to show us. That is specifically in. Uh, residential zoning out of our different residential zones or how about you know what what's business highway general that that they recommend should be mixed use if you will so is that what we're gonna get because I'm not I'm not prepared to say what I think needs to be changed over but that's what generally makes sense to me is to try to I'll get that percentage of residential I wouldn't say down but the business went up and, and just try to get modulated somewhat on that and that that new hot border, if you will, of, of sewer availability. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. I think one of the ideas is to try to get a sense of um, how prior, how development could be prioritized and the kind of development that we would most like to see the sewer be the catalyst for. Um, I think that you know, so far, what's been looked at is how are these areas zoned currently? Well, Congress Street is mostly, but not all. You know, commercial and industrial, and Main Street is mostly, but not all, commercial, um, with some residential. Um, and I think one of the things we like to try to figure out is, um, you know, we, there are some options for what kind of development we want to target through this sewer project because it could enable quite a lot of development. It could mm -hmm. enable, you know, less. If, um, you know, what scale of development really is appropriate and what's the right mix to, to be aiming for. I think we would have an opportunity to add some mixed use and residential development um, in some in some areas on Main Street. Um, but how much is the right amount? What's the right, you know? What kind of what, what would be the right vision for that? I think is, is one of the things that um, you know we kind of like to start to to try to get to, to try to get to. So is that are we are we tasked with that or <laughs> yeah? Right now, here which I'm spot. I'm fine yeah. with. I just, but are we are we going to get more some from the consultants or? I think what the consultants are going to be helping us do is to try to figure out based yeah. on the uh, potential that's presented by the sewer what that what those mixes could look like and that's not I think a decision or anything to be made for tonight but just right. kind of um, general feedback or whatever it should be but but realistic too along that along this pathway because you, if you, you look at just Concord the, the beginning portion of Concord up from Maine is very residential let's be realistic it's not let's uh, recommend that this be all mixed. I mean, uh, how much of that is really going to be realistic in, in the short term or even long term? But certainly, I think, you know, down Main Street, just wide open, wild west. I mean, 
but some portions of it we need to be realistic. They're not going to really change over to, to a business. Warren, you have a tear down. Yeah, Warren Pierce. The the um, there's already a pretty substantial demand, I think, for sewer system from from some of the existing businesses. I mean, there aren't too many. Um, Business. I know a lot of the restaurants on the main road are having a continuous battle to try to keep their systems uh, operating. So they'd be a direct uh, beneficiary of this, and I and I would imagine that the vast majority of them would endorse it very quickly. So because uh, um, considering um, what it costs them to take care of what they're taking care of, betterment would be uh, not that big of a deal <laughs> on the ability to tie into sewer. So, but even. Uh, even we know, we know we've had some problems at Walmart, and I think Stop and Shop replaces their system about every three years. I mean, there are really? th there's a pretty there's already a pretty substantial des demand right now for this kind of a this kind of a of a utility um, without adding any new <laughs> any new stuff to it. So, so and I, but I would think that you know based on some of the studies we've had done, that some level of mixed development would be okay. But there are still some industries, some businesses that we don't have out there that would, that would probably come, and and, and we've tried to do some, some uh, to encourage consolidation of some of these parcels, which would, uh, uh, which would probably happen, uh, when there was sewer, because then you could put something substantial in there, uh, because a lot of these small properties don't have any room for a septic system of any kind, so that you can't. Can't uh, put anything there. So uh, I can I can see change on the uh, upper part of Concord Street, um, where there's some big lots. There's still a couple of trucking companies in there, and uh, if sewers around, they're gonna their property's gonna become very very um, rich. Well, the thing that we're gonna the thing that we could probably end up with up there is we we actually had somebody try it one time. But we, but we, we don't have any hotels or any. No, we don't have any hotels. We don't have anything of any kind like that because we can't provide sewer for them. And we got we got office space that has huge parking lots which yeah. they don't need, and they have a huge parking lot because there's a septic system underneath the parking lot yeah. for their square footage. That's going to be changed. That would change. Right. We would be able to maybe we got Class B. I think uh, one of our members had well, said we had a. a I forget what they call it, a, a weekly hotel or something. They tried to right. get in. They wanted a very small yeah. hotel, wanted and to get just in. Couldn't, they just couldn't get a big enough septic system nope. in. they couldn't. So and that would... Running into issues with conservation and everything else. So so there are, interested, there are businesses like that that would be nice to have here that will that will be able to show up. I mean, and, 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 and primarily probably on Concord Street. Right. And not, the, not, so, not so likely on Main Street. No, it's not enough no. penalties. So we don't, we don't land like mass they, on Main Street. We don't have a laundromat. We we can't because the water use is so high in a laundromat that you know you couldn't build a septic system big enough to handle it right. if it was a laundromat of any size. And it's the kind of thing that would probably get some use. Yeah, in restaurants, especially from the from some of the uh, compartment buildings and so forth. You'd probably get people that would get them in there instead of going to Reading or other towns. Right, so instead of local to towns. But, right, right. You know, um, so, uh, it, but again, as I said before, the, the restaurants, there are a lot of the restaurants that would be, that just can hardly wait to get something like this. Oh, yeah, no question they, about they're it. They're having a constant battle with their systems. But yeah, mixed use on Main Street is the, you know, we, we started to a rezoning on, on that recently, and with sewer, we'd be able to just, I think, do a real rezoning of Main Street, get mixed use going, which, you know, get a lot of different uses in there. Mm -hmm. We're hoping for consolidations of some of those smaller lots together to make a bigger a bigger lot so they can put something of, of real means there. Yeah, well that MAPC study that indicated that we needed to do some, uh, that we needed to provide more more housing on there and some more small businesses. Yeah, there, there was a, a housing place. upstairs, businesses downstairs. Be a, well, however we do it, I'm not sure that the mixed use uh, model is as popular as it was when we started out. It may not be, but um, but there still is that demand. Up. But 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 that doesn't affect the demand that was identified no. for housing and for businesses to service those housing that housing. So I think that still exists. Yeah, it does. <clears throat> so let's talk timing here. <laughs> what's what's the timing of the report, Adria? 
what she told you about the Macy's comment? Um, can, Joe, can you remind me of the, the timing for uh, parts one and two of this? Cecilia, you're breaking up a little bit, Danielle. Can you repeat that? We need a, need a refresher on the timing of the deliverables. And I, I can take a stab at it because we talked about it the other night. Yeah. And anyone can jump in and correct me where I'm wrong. Is he on? <clears throat> so the analysis is way on its way. Um, we have a meeting with the, we have a workshop with the select board and Joe correct me if there's additional participants other than the select board members Just on select. August 5th to present our findings both from <coughs> part one and part two. Um, and then there's a meeting after the 5th, I believe August 8th, after the workshop to, um, to reconvene with the select board to get either some uh, specific feedback or to get approval from our results and then move on to the final uh, report. We just want to make sure that we have buy-in from the board in terms of our methodologies. And also, as Adrian mentioned earlier, we need the board to vote or make determinations of how we're splitting the, the, project, the project cost between what's general fund and what's betterment. And I mean betterment for the, for the budding properties. So once we have feedback on those, we can finalize our numbers and issue uh, the draft report for comment. Ms. Joe. Joe, are you generally I'm just going to add to that. It's Mike Gilberto, town administrator here. Um, so oh, we, we are uh, we're looking to, to brief the select board in a workshop style meeting on a Friday evening and then to have a, a more a traditional presentation in a hybrid type meeting at their regular select board meeting that Monday night. And then I think the thinking is that we would be taking, um, you know, the report in, in its form, you know, uh, whether it's in its final or what we think close to final form to um, the other um, boards and committees, um, chief among them this committee. So we expect to be coming back to you actually in August with um, something, you know, more detailed with, uh, with findings and with, uh, some level of proposal or recommendation in terms of the financing for the project as well as what we're projecting for development and how we're projecting it. Um, and then, you know, sort of, I expect that there may be some evolution of what that model looks like as we go through this process, getting more feedback. And ultimately, once we, we get to a spot where we're looking towards a town meeting, having public workshop style discussions where the public can come in and ask their questions freely. Uh, much of the way we did with um, the uh, secondary school building project um, now 10 years ago, I guess, at this point. Um, mm -hmm. One more. Um, so, yeah. Um, so that, that's sort of the thinking. So this, you know, this body was unique in that you know, because of the, the sort of vision aspect of it and the growth aspect of it, it's really, you know, a planning item. And so Joe had written in with Danielle's help to the scope that we get this feedback. And we know... I think we kind of knew where we were going to start. It's the master plan and some other studies that you all done over the past probably 10 years at this point in time now, maybe eight years. Um, so we started with that, but wanted to sort of get this type of feedback yeah. here as well. Okay, good recap. <clears throat> we'll just know down, you know, we have a working group um, that's um, public work staff, finance staff. Uh, the planner has been participating as well. Um, and select board members, uh, O'Leary and Studo, are also um, actively part of those conversations. Uh, neither of them could join us this evening, but um, they have been in, uh, it's got to be hundreds of hours of meetings. <laughs> yeah, um, and you know, again, we are, are, we're rapidly approaching the point where it's, you know, we're looking for even broader feedback starting right. here, but then expanding. Right. I, I think the feedback from the board we're missing two of our members tonight. Um, the one's on. I think Jeremiah's on. Yeah. He's on, but he had to step away. Oh, yeah. Oh, all right. <laughs> uh, um, so, but, you know, we're, we're just, we're quite ready for the, uh, the level that we need to, to participate, but we could be. We want, we want to be. I, we'd rather participate more. Um, and it's already middle of July, of July right? So... Is it possible to go to that workshop, Michael? 
with with the select board? I, the, so the workshop will be a, a public meeting, um, but I can tell you the intent is really to sort of educate the board members to the work that's taking place right. you know, ahead of a, a, a larger <coughs> presentation that will be televised. Right, right. And, and broadcast. Um, I, so, you know, if there's a, I think you can rest assured there's going to be additional opportunity for feedback. Mm. For right, right. Um, in, in the month of August, I know I talked to Danielle about, you know, kind of trying to sense what your meeting schedule is, so there will be you know, other opportunity and we would welcome you know, the two members who are not able to participate with you know, that feedback um, as well. Okay. All right. Cause our August, when's our August meeting? The second? Uh, uh, we're meeting the second. The second? August 2nd and August 16th. All right. So August 2nd is perfect because we can get some, maybe some info, we can get it to them. Though they might not be able to work work all of the uh, information into their presentation for the 6th, but at least we can get, maybe put that on our agenda, we can talk about it and, and uh, you know, get try to get a little bit more vision for that, for that area, which, you know, we haven't been really thinking of right now for the, for the sewer. In a zoning capacity, you mean? Pardon? In a zoning capacity? Yeah, what we got, what we can do to, to help, you know, and, and what we, what we, foresee is going to go there what we should plan for i mean you know obviously better better if we have sewer you you know restaurants are are an easy ad you know high density population is an easy ad uh laundromat you're right we don't have a laundromat i had to teach our daughter you know this is back when she was 11 years old before she went on the trip to uh, uh, where it was down DC or something, how to use a laundromat. We had to go to Reading to find a laundromat. It's, you know, we had to leave our town to find a laundromat. So that I bet you that's something that could open. Um, you know, things like that. But high high water use, a hotel. Um, what we're thinking about that, and that would be over on Cork Street where there's a little bit more land, um, and it's it's underutilized land there. There's there's a massive Behind that little retention pond, there's a massive parking lot, and and the building is, I mean, it's a big building, but it's not that big. It could be better. We could get better um, office space, or industrial space, because we're not sure what office space is going to do yet. <coughs> Zoom and hybrid meetings have changed that amazingly. And I might be going a little off road here, but I, I think with the opportunity of changing over the face of Main Street, we should, and it's a separate topic, but on our list of to do's, look into aesthetic improvements yeah, into the absolutely. zoning bylaws. And I spent a lot of time, as you did recently out in Western Mass, um, just looking going around. Well, going through certain towns, they have clearly ordinances there, whether it's a fast food restaurant, whether it's that really beautify the town. You can have all those places, they can exist and they look fine and they just are aesthetically more pleasing. And again, if we if, if we weren't gonna change things with what we're doing here, but the, the sewer is gonna change things. Properties change that are a storage huge. facility right now could convert right over because it makes more sense to sell off and do X. There's an opportunity to aesthetically change 28. So I think we have to strongly look at that. Right. Um, you know, along with the zoning bylaws that it gets supports mixed use or other things like that. That's to me what our contribution is. Every every board has theirs, but that's like what we need to do. Do it quickly so it matches up and merges right with the flow of sewer and development. And, um, and, and we want to get ahead of it because people are going to build in advance of it, yeah. even though for some of the reasons we just said they might not. <laughs> but yeah. there's going to be a little bit of good, that going on. So we just need to be. Good work ahead of it. Yeah, being able to build something like that destination location we talked about with the farmers, indoor farmers market and all that stuff, being able to provide for a, a site like that so that we would uh, we would actually draw people into the town. Yeah. So we yeah. Can, that's that's something that that opportunity will exist. So okay. All right, anything else? Joe, do you have anything for us? I don't know what I I, I guess I'm looking over there. <laughs> but I can't see you. I can look behind me. <laughs> Do you have anything else to add, Joe? 
Uh, I'd just like to say that, um, yeah, I think there's uh, certainly um, additional time to, to really, you know, look at, you know, the uses uh, along A Street, Concord Street, and, you know, determine, you know, what you think is best. This is a study, you know, this isn't uh, something we're going to be sort of um, in a position to, you know, assess betterments or, or, or just say this is it. You know, this is generating um, some some projections and and we're trying to generate as well some some thoughts on you know what is the best type of development uh, with this proposed sewer so this time we'll we'll have more um, meetings uh, with the board and uh, we'll have you know hopefully some some good decisions made as as we go along great thanks Joe and just to reiterate a few of the things that you just said yes this is a big picture study just to make sure that, you know, obviously the sewer is a, a, um, a, a good financial investment for the town. But we're certainly not looking at each particular parcel and looking at what it could become. So I, I heard you all talking about some hotels or uh, a laundromat. We're not necessarily going into the details of exactly what could come in. Um, one of the answers I was hoping to have, not necessarily today, but to pause it in your mind to see if we can get uh, some feedback uh, as we move along is this is a, it's a careful balance of not just unfettered growth because the town at the moment is restricted or constricted I should say by how much water they can use from Andover that's the three million gallons a day and then how much water they can dispose of when the sewer is in place which is the half a million gallon agreement with GLSD. So as much as we all want to think about, you know, hotels and all these and that, we need to make sure that we're balancing in how much the sewer can take, um, either to make sure that we're not undersizing it or that we're not uh, ridiculously oversizing it either if this growth doesn't come. Um, so I just wanted to put that in, in the ether so that you're all are thinking about it. And when we go over the part two, and we see the recommendations from FXM in terms of how much they project in terms of commercial growth, industrial growth, residential growth. We will go and look at those recommendations and assign a projection in terms of wastewater flows. And then we will come back and see, okay, is this more or less than the allotted 500,000 gallons a day? And if it's more, then the conversation becomes, what do we do? Do we create a sewer district and delineate who's allowed? Does the CPC have preferences in terms, I shouldn't say preferences, but an opinion in terms of, do we want to develop more commercial? I heard mixed use, or do we want to make sure that, you know, single family parcels become multifamily parcels? What kind of growth is, is the CPC looking for the town? Joe, I don't know if I, represented all of our conversations properly, but feel free to chime in. No, I think that was well said, Cecilia. I think, um, you know, there's decisions to be made on the limitations we have for both uh, water and uh, wastewater. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, what are the limits. Um, if if uh, projected growth could possibly outstrip those limits, then, you know, either, you know, couple of things could happen if we're limited to the 500,000 gallons of sewer and the 3 million in water then we want to certainly you know see about making decisions that would bring about the perhaps the best type of development in town uh, and how you do that I guess is up for discussion but um, yeah there are limits and we have to recognize that or make decisions about potentially um, you know going um, going in a different direction perhaps with uh, slightly more capacity or um, looking at other um, limitations that could be uh, raised. Great. <clears throat> Any more questions from the room? I think we're, I think we're good for tonight, folks. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Great presentation. Um, understand a little bit more about what we're doing um, and how you're doing, doing your analysis also. So thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. And appreciate everyone's time. Thank you for coming tonight. No problem. You as Thank well. You. Thank you. All right. Working to log off? Yeah.
I think good. <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you, you so much. All right, thanks, thanks everyone. Have a great night. Thanks, Joe. Thank thank you. You. Chris, I'm going to take a short yeah. break. All right. Everyone, I have to step up. Thank you. Leave us. Go take your tire. Thanks for coming, Mike. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having us. Like I said, we'll, we'll be back. All right. Be, I'm sure there will be plenty of conversation. Yes. First of many. <laughs> yeah, first of many. Just got to wait for Warren to come back. And then we're... Hey, Joe, are you hopping off? Or I get a question? No, I think I will. I, I don't think there's anything else unless there's any follow-up questions, but... I got one question for you, Joe. Um, it was to your point too, talking about the the max, the 500. Are it, will the analysis have the breakdown of the connectable, if you will, properties, uh, much like the map here, or at least a quantity? So it's in a very bulk form. It's this many properties divided by the 500,000, or into the 500,000 gives you how much. Getting to the point about trying to assess whether we have to modulate how much we promote the sewer usage across uses. Is there, are they doing that kind of high level? It comes down to this, this much uh, capacity per property or anything like that? Yeah, well, the, we certainly have some uh, detailed property by property and water account uh, information that right. we know where things stand now. And, and so what capacity that would sort of take from the 500,000 gallons and, and so the next question is, you know, what other uh, expansion areas uh, may be needed uh, in the future for, you know, reserving that capacity, such as like environmental purposes, and other uh, excess capacity would be for the growth that we want to promote. How you direct that, you know, excess capacity, I guess, is the question. Um, certainly, it's you know. Uh, proposed to be economic uh, growth for commercial industrial sectors, I, I would imagine, for the most part. Um, you know, if there's any kind of housing needs, that can sort of be discussed as well, I would imagine. But decisions would have to be made as to how to allocate the reserve capacity. Right. Okay. But there, we're getting some of that detail with this final report in late August. Um, or I, I guess to, to some degree it'll it'll show you know the reserve capacity, but also you know the types of developments that could potentially um, come into town based on the analysis, and then you can perhaps see where you know you rather redirect to this type of uh, development as opposed to some other type right. perhaps. And, so it, and it, it'll, it, there'll be some some items of discussion for sure in the report. Yeah, and it, and it I, I I get the the difficulty in trying to project too much, but even just baseline based on like what you said, we have the water bills right now. So from that information, at least along the route, you could extrapolate how much just baseline connected you you're, you're going to have out of that five hundred thousand. Wouldn't you agree? And that's again, it's a it's just a math exercise, but you'd be able to say this is my usage across all these different connected. Uh, uh, or what would be connected along the route, you'd be able to extrapolate how much just baseline right now, if everyone just connected, I'd be drawing or, or outflowing, right? It makes sense. That's correct. So that'd be interesting to see that. Yep, that'll be part of the details that will be uh, you know, packaged up in a, in a report. That's all I have. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for staying on. All right. Thanks, Joe. All right. Have a good night. Thank you all. Good night. Good night. <clears throat> it's a big so the, area, though, right, Leon? It's a big, it'd be just interesting to see where, if you just turn off the nozzle, like what, what's it at right from the start with right. just those right. properties? Because we are going to make them connect, right? It's part of the whole betterment thing, right? You're, if they're going by, you're well, going to... The law in Massachusetts... I, the just, law in Massachusetts says if you've got, a, if you've got a, a functioning system, you don't have to connect. But if you're going to get charged the betterment fee and the but connection you, fee... You may, you, get pay, you may get charged to go across the front of the property. Right. You know. So if you decide you don't want to you gotta get you're gonna get a charge for the pipe going by your house, I believe. But here here's the here's the thing where the town and this will be part of the workshop with with really DPW select board is 
you could give people that option of, I have got a perfectly working septic yeah. system. I'll connect definitely, I want to, I know I'm paying the betterment, but I'll do it in a few years. The problem with that is the amount of destruction to the road, you're constantly cutting through the road, they, they'll pave, and then now I want to connect, yeah. and all you're gonna see is all this cutting, and well, it has to be kind of a, it has to be a coordinated thing. Right. It's it's the way they the way they do the road, if they put those- The laterals the in? Laterals and, and and the laterals into the sidelines. Side it's true, I mean, maybe that's- They put the laterals to the sidelines, and then because when DEP, uh, the, the moratorium, it, when, right? when Massachusetts comes through and paves the road, it's a moratorium. It's right? a moratorium. It five years or something. It's like a five-year moratorium. And I now a failed septic system may be an emergency. They'd let you cut the road for most. <laughs> Would be you know, but if if that happens six months after you put the system in, is that really an emergency? You probably already knew you had a failing system. You it's just, just stuff to think about. Yeah. It's a, but you're probably right. They would just, you know. It, but I mean, it, you can't just, I guess what I'm saying is if you're coming down Main Street and you have these, a parcel of land that is whatever, uh, 300 feet, 400 feet long, they they can't just come up with where, this is where I'm going to throw the T in. I, I, I don't know. I just think you have to kind of connect to it. Yeah, you know, if you get a big property like that, you, you're probably the because guy. it's where your existing outflow is going to be if your gravity. But then that person could sell, and then you have a new development. Then you're cutting back into Main Street again. So it just needs to be. You're always going to have people who aren't going to. Yeah. We yeah. know that. Yeah. But I think in this whole map problem that we're right, it is it's like a map is. problem. You have to make an assumption that everybody's going in. Yep. yep. Right. So right. You get an idea of what would be. If you, if you don't make that assumption. You, you've, you've lost right at the beginning. Right. So, you, you, so not you, only new development, you know, but right, like you said, Dave, but right from the start, everybody in. Yep. Yeah. Every, every address, every square foot, yeah. every lineal foot of Main Street is going to be tied in, or, or whatever we're going to, whatever they're going to service, Park Street. You yeah. know, there's people on Park Street that have residential houses and they got a fine septic system where they got plenty of property, they're not going to want to tie in. Right. You know, we want to tie, we want to get the, the business area tied in, not, the, we're not worried about the residential area. It's, it's from my point of view as a planner, because I kind of agree. It's almost like the beginning part of Concord. You almost just want to race, race down the street. Right. right. Just get, you just get you just want to put a, you area. just want to put a pipe in, and right. yeah. you know if at some point we'll someone wants to connect to it, that's fine. You can yeah. connect, and and you're going to be not that concerned. right. Exactly. You want to get from but from they're going to the, be hit from, with the betterment, though, right? So right. That, there lies the whole thing. You're getting hit right. with the betterment. What do you get up for a betterment? Right. Yeah. You know they might have to pay so something. That comes like, to us. That's right. To decide. Know, how you do it. How we do, how you do it. That's right. Mm -hmm. Which is what we voted on at town meeting. That yeah. gave us the ability to do that. Yeah. Yeah, we're just talking about people on on, on uh, Concord Park Street, where there's just residential. Yeah. Well, they, actually, they, they have good Park section Street, systems. Park Street's not so bad off. But what happens is when you go off to the right down Nutter Road, and yeah, Ames Street. That's what's terrible. The, the septic systems down there are like five feet in the air because the water table so high. Yeah. So when we did that, when we did that whole uh, wastewater advisory committee that I was on for 15 years. Yeah. We did a matrix of the to whole town, and we broke it down by where the high needs were. So a, a quick review of that matrix will tell you where the where 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 you really yeah, need. Yeah, they're them. not they're not looking at tying in Nutter Road. I know, but, you know? That, but I mean, I was noticing that, but I didn't say anything at the time, but I can tell you there are a number of places in town, um, uh, in, in that area where, where you need to, you really need sewer because it actually is costing a lot more for them to put a septic system there than it will cost for sewer. They, yeah. They'd gladly take the betterment. <laughs> Well, you haven't seen the betterment yet. <laughs> well, no, we, we did. We did we, there was a little bit of an analysis done about the betterment being somewhere in the end of, of twenty-nine thousand dollars or something. And and um, but these systems down there now are going to cost forty-five thousand dollars. I mean, they'd gladly pay the betterment instead, especially since you can pay it off over twenty or thirty years, depending on how the town decides to structure it. All right, so let's get let's get into getting things done. We we'll do minutes, right? We'll do minutes. Um, we got minutes. <coughs> I don't have a clerk. <laughs> David. We have Dave. We have Dave. 
Mr. Chairman? Mr. We, uh, Mr. Redloff. Okay, I got it. I move that you accept the, we accept the minutes dated June 21st, 2022. A second? I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Do we have Ryan or? Jeremiah is on, but he had to step away, so I don't know. If he okay. Is. Um, no, I don't think he. Yeah, he's he's silent and he's offline, so. Yeah, Three's not right. It's okay, we on. have three. Three's a so. charm. Three's a charm. Yeah. So all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Post. Three in favor, and Jeremiah and. Ryan. Ryan. Ryan is not here tonight. All right. Um, discussion on the ADU? Well, I don't know how much discussion we, we want, we're going to have because we basically, we've already <clears throat> kind of been down the road with this thing did a you, couple did, times. Did you read her new? Yes, the, of course. Which is, which is I, I thought was I concise, printed, yep. short. I printed, <clears throat> I printed it all out, made a paper airplane out of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean it was. I think I thought it was a good analysis, a good breakdown of, of what's in there and what's not in there. So that made it a lot easier to read. But um, but basically, it's a lot the same with what we talked about before. You know, so. Um, the, the, but I think but now. The question for the question. Well. Go ahead. I, my first question would be: Did we show it to Jerry yet? Seen that version before, yeah. um, and we've, uh, we've because whatever we talked about the contents of it. Do you want me to? Whatever we do them? here, whatever we do with this, he's the enforcing. He's the one that's got to deal with it. Right. He's got to be comfortable. So that's that's why I would. That's why my first question is: Is Jerry read it? Is he okay with it? Because yeah. it really doesn't give much more than we already. Are, he's already required to give by the. State law. I can discuss with Jerry what the newest version is um, of the bylaw, which is kind of the old version, but with a little summary at the beginning. Yeah. And I'll, I, we can, we can sit down about that. Um, and if you'd like me to do that before we have any more, you know, real detailed discussion on this, I can. I can yeah. Well, no, I, I think it know, might we, be worth we it. Can, we can certainly discuss it, but I think what really, what really comes out of um, that is. Um, I would hope, anyway, that uh, it would encourage people to do things, you know, properly, to pull all the proper permits and do everything, knowing that, that, that they can do that. But I think that the, that the restrictions in it, um, while they may be um, acceptable to, the, to, to us and perhaps to the select board when they look at it, um, it doesn't really go very far, and uh, you know, requiring it to be a um, a relative or a caretaker. Um, I mean, it's it's certain. I mean, I like the idea of it being. Uh, I mean, I, I like the idea of using it to keep a family together. You know, I mean, that was that's my uh, that's what I think is would was. Right, that's, that's the relative part. Does that. Yeah. I have a question. Sure. What is the difference between an accessory dwelling and an in lot? There is no difference. There is, there is no, no difference. difference. No. It, and, it, no. and this is exactly what we're basically writing here is an in law well, dwelling. Well, well actually, let me you gotta be that there is a difference. There is a difference. Actually, the difference is that the accessory dwelling unit is allowed to be separate, separate. completely from the other building. Right. And an in law generally is not. Generally, an in law is. Yeah, they, they have so open they have, opening. They can travel back and forth, forth. through uh, through the whole house. Uh, right. They have their own space, you know, but it's not necessarily a lock. <clears throat> they actually may not have their own kitchen. Yeah, yeah. They, right. in, in, in an except, in a, but I've this this, this, this you can have it be a totally separate apartment within the within the the building. What we want it to be is like Warren said for relatives right. to you know. If, well, that's you go and you take the big house and you put the, the your your parents downstairs or, or first floor wherever. So, so what's the point of changing it? What is that? We have nothing right now at all. 
ADU, ADUs are not are not no. allowed. Well, we don't really. We don't really. No. We, we, we what we have is a uh, is following some state codes, according to Jerry when he took when I talked to him, that allow you to go get right to the brink of of it of a. Uh, and by yeah. leaving one item out or something, you can call it whatever you want. Because uh, uh, a house could have three different kitchens if you want, you know. Right. And, uh, and, and that doesn't make it a... You doesn't know, make it illegal. Or, you, know, you know, but however... You, it's the stove, I think, is what makes the difference. Yeah, you, you, know, you, can, have, you can have three different kitchens, but no, only one stove. Yeah. So, so no matter they, how big it is, but one. So, that, so anyway, that, that, that doesn't really... Um, so you can actually get right to the brink. That's the thing, without and, and legitimately, legally. Um, but the people that want to go that next step and, and actually make it a complete in-law, they're the ones that are going to avoid pulling any permits. And so, so the the the, the big thing that uh, that I find attractive to to having the bylaw is that it encourages people. It says, okay, we're going to let you do this, but pull your permits and everything, and, and do it legally and. And, um, and legitimately and get your inspections and it's all good. And that way, not only do we know the things that, that everything's code in one of those places so we don't have a disaster in one of them for some reason, but we also are able to inform people like the fire department about how many people are actually in that building, yeah. how many right, units are important. in that building. It is important. But what's the point of being detached? Well, detached be, the problem detached ends up becoming more of a um, of a another uh, dwelling. Really well, more of a more of something like a, a, a rented apartment as opposed That's to my concern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that and that we're we're not Airbnb. yeah we're not yeah. looking we're not looking at those, and you know, remember we're on sewer, oh, we're not on sewer we're on septic, so you may you may probably already have a four bedroom septic system yeah. and so if you take Which one of the bedrooms and make it in, into whatever it's going to be you're still configured so that's one of the things that's in this bylaw is that there has to be a septic uh you know there has to be uh, some septic kind of approval design. by the board of health that the septic system is capable because if you have a four bedroom home and you add Another and you and even in this bylaw, you can add a room on. You can pour a foundation, add on to your house, and have yeah. that room be. But if that adds another bedroom, you're in, and your four bedroom is now five, you and the septic it. system isn't designed for it, then you're going to have to redo the septic system, which is not which is not a small cost anymore. So, um, so if you room, you know, so if you were going to do an, an, an you know a, a accessory dwelling unit, you know, you might want to get rid of one bedroom and then put it in the accessory dwelling unit. And again, if it's for a family member or a caretaker, I mean, I mean you know, I, I see people doing that. I yeah. do a lot of Title V inspections, and I'm in a lot of houses. You'd be amazed. You'd be amazed at how many, uh, how few of them don't have that extra space set up. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and the you know, standard. And none of them are real, really two families, and they're all, a lot of them are in town here, and they're, they're just single family homes, and you do all the paperwork on it, but when you walk through there, it's definitely got. It's you, you can tell it's more than one family living in. A separate whole place for another yep. family. Or, or, or usually, and usually it's a family member. Almost always, actually, it's a family member. So that's why we have that. That's why we, we're writing it that way. It's basically for family members and caretakers. But then you have the police staff. That's where that You have the police at anything anyway. Yeah. Well, if you it's don't, then you got to be, you, you know. I'm thinking about when sore goes in, like you're talking about. That's Main the Street, though. That's different. Tree, yeah, the, those, those different, but it's like different. But you might have to modify, that, you know, right. because of the one requirement. Yeah, that yeah. Warren said. Now. Yep. Right. You have to kind of yeah. modulate it, maybe for that. So what? Well, well, just another, another, another what, layer. What Jerry was running into is people put building a garage with a second story on it, right? And then calling it storage space, and then once everybody's gone. Suddenly, it's got plumbing and yeah. 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 yeah, you look. They got a two hundred. No, it has plumbing. In the garage, which but you don't need. As Jerry says, they're not. They're not legally. Able, they're not supposed to infer. So you have our plumbing wiring inspector seeing all the wiring and everything for an apartment. The plumbing inspector seeing a complete vent stack all set up for whatever. Yep. And they're not allowed to infer for that yet. 
like, what is it then? You know, you know what's going to happen. And the permit says garage yeah. on the plumbing permit, and yet you're having a plumbing inspector come inspect what basically it turns out to be four or five fixtures, yeah. you know, to a vent stack that gets installed and roofed in and everything. It's just kind of crazy. Yeah. So the detached ones are to me have always been the ones that I'm the most concerned with. Um, the, the ones I'm not in, in a more flexible would be in the home. And I'm open to it not just being a caretaker and an in-law because if it's in the house and it's and it, we have good guidelines for that, both in the septic, all these kind of different things, then to me, because to your point, it's so hard to police. Yeah. And, and who's, you know, even with the in-law thing, within four or five years, a lot of times, this is what a lot of towns comment. It's how do they know the parents could have passed away? Right. It's right. just, and right we're not in that job of policing, right? And you don't want to put that on Jerry or that, that team. Right. It's not their job. So that's why it's like, do you, do, is that really the gain or is it just making sure it's a, it's a good, reasonable space, size, it's accessible, it's safe, yeah. it's on the books. Like yeah. I could care less that's who how, stays yeah. there. But that's where um, that detached that's where I come into That's it. Detached. That's where you get into apartments and yeah. Yeah. why would you want you're, you know, you're starting you into want apartments. Them? Yeah. I just think I mean and yet, you All know, right. with the with the attached, you know, the the average you see out there for the allowance is nine hundred square feet, like just on an average, but it certainly it goes up and down. But you know, that's a pretty decent size that's space. Huge. Yeah, like that's huge. you know, so I mean as long as can be attached, yeah. I think it preserves a little bit of the character. And then there's those towns that have the carriage houses that are lovely towns like yours, Melrose. You know, those should have a provision for those kind of carriage houses and things like that. But it's not everybody's house is like that. Right. So you can't just blanket that and say, yeah, build a garage. And because most people don't, you know, really don't have the, the land to do all that. You know, have this big kind of almost 900 like square feet is a lot of room. <clears throat> My daughter just bought a condo that has half of that. It's a one bedroom. Yeah, when I lived in Boston, I lived in a lot less than that. So, <laughs> So it's just, you know, it's the way it is. 900 square feet, you could put a, how many, how big was the house you grew up in, Ward? Oh, big, and nine kids. Oh yeah, well you did have three. <laughs> That's a little it's bit bigger. But I mean, you, you can look at the houses on Swan Pond Road. Well, it started a pretty good size. You know, my uncle who was a builder who lived next door. My father said, get up here and we had it. the same size all again. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> But the house on Swan Pond, though, were probably like a, a thousand square feet, and they had three bedrooms in them. It was more like a barracks, you know. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, that's life. Like boys. All right, so let's do that, Daniel. I'll just meet Jerry. Yeah, and then, and then you know, we'll go through this. It's, it's, it's small, compact. We'll talk about, you know, we'll go, if we have to go line by line, we will. We'll, and get, we'll get something out of it, you know. I know it's it's part of the board wants to get this done. I we all want, a, I think we all want to get this done as a board. Yeah, I, I think it's, I think what we got right there is, it's, it's not too expansive and it's it's pretty much a nice small package, not, not too big. A place to start. Yeah, and I, and I, I don't see, um, I don't see, I, I say that if we didn't keep it compact like this and small, it wouldn't go anywhere. That's right. And the only, and, and so I think I think Danielle did a great job of compacting this. Well, thanks, but the compact part is only the summary. I mean, the actual bylaw is still as I know, but, but the bylaw is the bylaw. Have all that but I mean, but I mean, to, but, to, but 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 to the basic points yeah. are it's the law itself is not very expansive. No, it's not. Although and that, that's what I mean. Based on our discussion tonight, do you want me to take out that provision of, that requires it to be relevant? No, oh. I, I like that idea. Oh, you wanted it to stay in there? I, like I think you should leave it in, especially for the other boards, or at least the. Yeah. Okay. the I think that's they, 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 they might want it, Daniel. I was just giving you my opinion because of more enforceability. Um, but if I could recommend too, there's there's all these. If you go online and look, but I found a pretty good resource, which is um, this study that was a follow up to a 2006, but they did it in 2018. It's a pretty comprehensive one done by the Massachusetts Smart Growth Alliance Commission, and I'll forward it to Danielle, who can then forward it to everybody else. But it's like, and I'll just be candid, it's it's like many of the ones that are published and you can find online, they're 
they're really promoting ADU. So you have yeah. to take that with a grain of salt. But in the, the fair part about this one, I think, is in they go through every category. Almost, it's really good. And it breaks down and it says, in this category, 60, you know, of the 60 towns, and they're all, their neighboring towns, it's Wilmington, Reading, all the, they're all in it. You know, it's a pretty good comprehensive list. But it, it breaks down on every category. It says 16 of the towns do this. You know, they have this rule. Um, that's where I even came up with the 900 square feet. A majority have 900 square feet is the average allowable square footage for an ADU. And there's nuance and stuff, but it's it's the one study and breakdown. It's about you know 12 pages, but it gives you a little context on every single one of them without having to go look at the zoning tables of, of every single town. But you're like, oh, you know, this has pretty broad participation. This one less so. Um, and there's just funky ones. It's just really... So it really interesting. Some people may, sometimes make you re-register every year in ADU. Some go three years. There's a, a, a good a good section on the owner, uh, owner certifying that they will live in the main dwelling. Uh, owner is allowed to leave for up to two years. It just, it's all over right, the board. Right, yeah, you get but that. it gives it gives it, you know everybody on the team if we're all looking at it. And as I I said to Danielle, I saw a table of it and I couldn't find it but I've put it kind of into a spreadsheet that I'll send to you. So it's one of those things where you can kind of tick off or you could even, if you want to get fancy and put the towns that are participating and say whether they do or not, you know, it's a yes, no, or if it's a square footage one, it would just be literally, you can look down the list and see every town what they allow by number. What was this? Um, this I'll, I'll have Danielle forward it to you, but it's a 2018 study by the Pioneer. Well, it's a Pioneer to the 2006 and then the the Massachusetts Smart Growth Alliance Utilized re-upped that. it. Yeah, yeah. they re -upped. They took it and then updated it all. Right. In case, in, you know, because their participation Sounds back like in 2006 was only a good read to get was only like impetus? 20 towns were doing it in 2006. Well, it's what now, was the impetus for them to upgrade it? Is, is this, is it? I mean, they were funded by a grant, you know, and yeah, I think there's just, you know, there's obviously a real push to get the housing. I think they wanted to update all the town, what towns were yeah, in. So yeah, I just find it, again, it's very pro ADU, state is but in fairness, it's, it's fair. It's just giving you just a, it's pretty good data. Yeah. But, but it went from what, 20 towns in 2006 to 26 or something until into the 50s now. Yeah, you know, so it's it's growing. Yeah, yeah. In some, it's very small. Maybe the way we want to baby step, and then if it's successful, yeah. you grow it a little bit. You grow it a little bit. I don't ever see bit. it going to, to to another building, a separate. Well, building. I don't know. I wouldn't say that yet. It, no, I mean, it could. But you know, no, it's the, the, it's the what the town wants. It's what, what the people the want. want. Yeah. Right. No, no. Yeah. But I mean, start small. Yeah. You know, well, that's what I. That's why I think this is this is probably just the way it is. It's I'll email pretty small. It right it is now. small. Yeah, it's small. It doesn't. It's not too expansive. And While I'm think, here, I think you can sell it. I mean, I think that's right the key point. Can, <laughs> can you get everybody to say yes? Are we thinking we would like to target this for um, the October town meeting? Um, do we want to take any more time to have any more? You know, well, two. Discussion if question? I may, go ahead, Chris. Okay, what I would, what I think, we, two steps. First, we should. Uh, Definitely run it by Jerry and make sure he doesn't make, want to make any major changes. If he likes it, he says, well, it's not perfect, but it's good enough. Then we take it to the select board and do the same thing. And w with the ability to say building inspector has gone through it, he says yeah. he can work with this just fine. That would be an important point. And, uh, and, if, we, and if we get that far with it, on to the meeting. I think October is kind of a push. Yeah, it's a, a push. Change. It's really a push for October. I mean, I think we're already in the middle of July. I think uh, you know yeah. we may we may ask the selectmen if we can get that on in June. Well, we, right. Usually we do money in June, but sometimes we can we do we these. Can. Yeah, we can. You know, um, it's 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 always at the purview of the select board. Yeah. Um, but you know, I think it's it's kind of an important thing, and it's not like we've been not working on it. Yeah. It's it's a it's a difficult. It's a difficult item to to complete and do it correctly for this time. Right. Well, there's you a know. lot of there's a lot of stuff in there. I mean, there's, there's a lot of possibilities in there that, that people will be worried about. And so, keeping it simple yeah. and keeping it compact, right. like we did, has a good chance of getting through. So. And and you know that some of the stuff that people are worried about, it's already happened. Yeah, that's. Yeah. And and we can't control it. I know. And we may not be able to control it even with this. 
So. Well, you know, again, the, the, the value to this is, to, is if people say, can I do this? If you say yes, pull, you can pull all the proper permits. Cause it's right. So you, so you don't have to say no. And as long as, because then you they know. They get a the list of what they have to do. Everything's been properly inspected. Everything's going to be safe. To yeah. yeah, yeah. There's a lot of advantages. And, and the biggest thing is right away is making sure your septic system is up to snuff. Yeah. Well, that's 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 really important. But with sewer, again. But there's yeah. only a few houses that yeah. are going to be impacted by that. Yeah. It's only a few houses that. Go up to McIntyre and all those places up there. They all got two front doors. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm looking at I'm looking at you know where I live, and that's where I live, that end of town. I'm on Swan Pond, and and McIntyre's behind us, and they got all these big pros, parcels, and they got huge houses, and some of them are done. When you go and you look at the room above their garage, their three-car garage, it's almost 900 square feet. <laughs> if this does pass the town meeting and we end up having this as part of our zoning bylaw, it might not be a bad idea for us to put together a little guide to ADUs and sure. things like that. Because we did for our yeah. most meeting, we'll do some of the things that we're going to do for our zoning bylaws. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a yeah, great thing to do. I agree. This is what you need and you're know, talking yeah. about it in real simple language. So we don't have to necessarily go checklist to find yeah out no, out. just checklist yeah. even yeah. and, know, and so that might helpful. be something we do for town meeting too to get it by yeah, yeah. just do a little checklist yeah. so people can can look okay so these are the things you've got to pass the first one's going to be can your septic system handle the number of bedrooms because you're adding a bedroom yeah. you may be adding a bedroom or you may be taking a bedroom and moving it to an adu Important to do this legally with the proper permits because right. if the fire and police departments really want to know where everybody lives, you know, right there. Explain to why. Yeah, because I a lot of right. the ones, a lot of the ones that I've seen do not have a secondary right. egress. Right, they don't. They have to come. They're in the maybe in the basement floor, and they got to come all the way across, and go up the stairs, and get out to the house. And they might not be able to go up the stairs. That's right. That's right. And the fire department doesn't know that. Right. And they have oxygen. So it's things and like the fire that. department doesn't know that. It's things like that that you avoid when you do it when you do it properly. So there's, yeah. there's a lot of safety involved. And let's face it, like you said, if your septic fails because you did this, yeah, that's an expensive. Yeah, it's, it's an expensive, expensive, and you may not be able to afford it. Well, and again, again, that the neighbors aren't going to be happy either. Basically, what you got, what what, ha but according with the way in 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 this bylaw, it says. That the Board of Health has to have. Right. Has to no, no, no. Lines, that's the so. that's like number one, Warren. Well, I don't think so. You don't, um, you no, don't think that's no, the. No I, no, I think that all of the other rules that we have in there come first, and you know these are the things you need to do, and make sure that that, and then to say, to make sure that this that you can meet this criteria, and let the Board of Health make that decision. I mean, you know, that's sure. that's basically the way, the way it should go. So. I mean, there are a lot of houses out there that I've done inspections on that have four bedroom designs and only three bedrooms. Right. Right. So, so they, they're ripe for something like that and yeah. they don't even need to do anything. Yeah. So, so my house has only got three bedrooms and it's got a four bedroom system. In it. See, I see a lot so of is, is, is four bedroom. But it's nowhere to add one. Is, 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 is the 10,000 gallon tank kind no, of. No, 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 no. Yeah. So that's kind of the average of what most no, people put no, in, no? No, no, they're 5,000 gallon. No, 1,500 gallon tank is all you got to have by code. For a four bedroom? Yeah, it used to be, it used to be a 1,000 gallon, and then the, and, and then the 95 okay. code came along. And, and a, lot of, a lot of towns are doing 1,500s along before that. Right. But basically, it's double the daily flow. So um, uh, a, a five bedroom home is, is basically 550 gallons a day. Two times that is 1,100, so 1,500 still works. Got it. So that's how they calculate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's how they calculate. So. I knew that at one time. You don't need to know it. He's here. That's for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, the economic uh, development committee. We need to appoint another member because I'd like to not be the active member. But we're missing two people tonight. Um, Next meeting. What's that? Next, Next meeting. meeting? <laughs> you know we're all looking at you. <laughs> yeah. There's a trap door here. <laughs> and you know, Hi, I, everyone. You know, I, I talked oh, to a lot about members running. into doing that. Remember Billy? <clears throat> I had Billy was I was on on the board, and then I yeah. talked. Billy was became the member, but I went to all the meetings. It's not like I I go away. They're pretty quick too. Not... They are. I'm trying to keep them quick. Yeah. But but the responsibility is a little less yeah. on on the. 
people who are not voting members. So, yeah. so let's do that. Let's look at that next meeting, please. Uh, ZBAs? So we don't have any ZBAs for the upcoming meeting, though I did just want to address a couple of applications that were on their last meeting because we didn't have a meeting prior to that. And um, Jerry had expressed some concern and had wanted some input from the CPC earlier in the week and, in last, and last week, but he ended up meeting with the property owners and I just wanted to kind of give you an update on what has taken place for both of them. Um, so for, back to my notes, because I, I Jerry and I just spoke about this today. Um, Is the meeting Thursday? Or? The meeting was Thursday. Was, last so last one of those again, yeah. So they've both been continued though. Okay. Um, so there is time to give input, but Jerry just kind of wanted me to update you all on what had taken place. Um, so 142 Main Street um, and 144 Main Street are being were looked at together by the CPC when we did the site plan review. But 142, um, the gas station has been is has been sold, and so the access is not necessarily going to stay open. Or actually, I shouldn't say it. it's not going to stay open. The new owner has. Um, made it clear that he's not been given access. Um, so the way that driveway was around uh, to serve the mobile homes um, is, is not open. Um, and so uh, part of, so Jerry had let them know that they needed to come into the CPC and modify their site plans. We looked at it together and um, it's, it, it does change the way that site works, um, but he can't require one site to give access to another site because they're two different properties so <laughs> so that you're talking the the gas station and the yeah the gas station yeah. The, yeah. the the fenced in lot yeah that's all under a different owner now yeah and okay. the other thing that's happened is the fenced in lot the fence itself yeah, has it's, become it's, quite it's, altered yeah. um, it's not quite the same site plan that the cpc approved back when and I don't know who is in there because it's not the same people that were in there before. Because no, now it's like I a contract or something in there. Uh, the new ownership information, which I, I have in the file. Um, so these are some things. So so what we're going to do is, um, well, he, Jerry has, uh, so he said the ZBA continued that one until uh, September. Um, and he would like them to come in to uh, have a site plan with you for any changes that they want to keep on the site that have you know that have been altered from what was originally yeah. So I'll keep you updated on that. Um, it's the <coughs> new owner of that did the guy was it the guy that owns the the, the um, trailer park out back bought that property. Did he buy that property? I don't, I don't know if he's the new owner. So it had previously been well, the question, the, well, the basic question is, is, there's no good use for that property if it's not attached to something else because it's just an open lot. Well, are you talking about the gas station property? Yeah, the one next, the lot next to it, the fenced-in area. Well, the gas station is a standalone. Pardon? That's the mobile home property behind. Yeah. Well, that's what I was asking. No, the yeah. fence, the fenced-in property. That's part of the gas station property. No. That's the Used to be. Home. That's part of the mobile home? Yeah, it used to be. <laughs> no, that, that, the fenced-in property, Chris, when we did, the, yeah, we'll we did the site plan review there, that piece of property had to be fenced in, and, and, the, and it belonged to the gas station, and the gas station was, had a car sale license, and they were going to use that, that lot there, fenced in, for the storage of cars that are being prepped for sale. But after they made a mess of their, from what I understand, made a mess of their car sales thing, I think they lost their license. Yep. Okay. So then they sold the gas station itself without that lot next door to yep. somebody, to an independent operator who runs it now. And that, and that lot on the side either stayed with the original owner or belongs to the, 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 to the, uh, how, the, the mobile home park in the back. I, I don't know who the new owner is of that, but it is not the gas station owner. But when we did the site plan review, those two properties were connected, and, and that was the use for that particular fenced in area was for the prep of cars to be sold. Okay. Right? Okay. That's, yeah, that's, what the, that's the way it works. Yeah. yeah, all right, you're right. Yeah. 
So yeah, that is that is on the same property as the gas station. Uh, actually, no, it's not. It this looks right like there. if you look at the map. Yeah, I'm gonna find the map. Line ends. See this little rectangle? That's the gas station property. And the mobile. Oh, Oops. And the mobile home. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I you think this is the property there. line here. Right. Yeah. yeah. So here's this car storage area, and here's the mobile home area, right. and here's the driveway that goes all the way through. Oh, to the left. Yeah. Okay. So I don't even see that. So again. that is going to be stopped there now. Yeah. So they put jersey barriers here. Okay. And so. That's the that's the driveway into that. Mm -hmm. Makes it very difficult for those people to get in and out. I'm sure it does. Oh well, yeah, because they only got that one on the left hand side now. That access, right? Yeah. And there's no way to really turn around in there. So, so what? So, so according to what you got right there, that fenced-in area belongs to the mobile home park. It does. Yeah, that's 144. All right. That property. See, now that's a major difference between what what we approved on our site. Plan. Yep. Yeah. It that's is what I'm saying. Yeah. Major difference. Yeah. Yeah. Major difference. So they not not so they, only they do they in. have to come in. Yeah. They have to come in because they made a change. Right. A property a property change. Right. You know, it's well, the, well, the well, question, well, the question now is what is the proposed use of that fenced-in area? This, uh, I saw something they're in there, it looked like contractors. They're just keeping stuff there. Yeah. It's not, it's it's storage. not what it was when we It's storage. It. Yeah. And it's not good storage, I don't think. I, I would say they're probably, somebody's renting it to put this stuff in there. Yeah. I was so, going to actually ask you about that. Oh, okay. Yeah. So Jerry's on top of that and would like them to come in for a second review. Um, so I'm guessing we'll be seeing them soon. Um, the other thing he wanted to discuss with us was uh, the Reading Lumber property, which um, they're also in front of the CBA because um, they were appealing a cease and desist that um, Jerry had issued um, based on a, a bunch of issues relating to storage that was not in the places that the CPC plan says they can have storage, also um, keeping heavy vehicles, which um, he had said was not even just a storage issue, it was just a use issue. It's not about so, I, so I talked to Jerry, mm -hmm. found some length about this, about this site, and I also sat and talked to Danielle about it for a while after talking to Jerry about it. <laughs> and um, his contention is that First of number one, she's, she's correct. The the um, the storage of materials that we dictated to them on that is not being followed. Okay. Right. However, his 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 second and third thing are all them cranes on the left hand side. There's no there's no, no been no allowance for them to be. They don't belong. In, they just showed up. Yep. Then on the right hand side, there's a bunch of construction equipment and everything, which right. he also just, says is not supposed to be there. Shouldn't be there either. Um, what what can be there, or sh you know, or should be there, based on the previous plan, or, or not? Basically, it, 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 he they, he's allowed. Well, this actually goes a long ways back. So there's, there's there's some question. There's some question on the right hand side about how long the equipment's been stored there. It may be a long, long, long time. They had, but they originally had um, the shed people. Right. Yeah, the shed people were there. They, right they there. were in there, and they and, might and have had. Right now, you right now the shed business is still allowed there. Yeah, but the it's shed, not there. It's allowed. gone. But, they, yeah. the Reading so Lumber Billy, kicked them Billy, out. <clears throat> that's because Billy was the guy that was building the sheds, right. and he died. Right. So, um, so when he passed away, the shed thing kind of went away. So. And, and suddenly, it was now. I know what you're talking about. There was equipment storage behind the sheds, and yeah. I think it was. I think it was. Extreme equipment used for the sheds or storage for the shed stuff. Well, there was there was uh, yeah there was some trailers for storage of parts and stuff, but uh, but then there's but but there's the construction next equipment there. Yeah, so, yeah, now now there's so, yeah so, we've been but, complaining but was, about that for a but, long time. But I but I think that I'm trying to remember how far back it was, but that there wasn't anything like that. There. I've I been think, seeing that the whole time we've been in North Reading. Yeah, well, I, I think so I've been seeing it for a long time too. So so years. that side there may be. There may be some, uh, if we've gone through, well, first of all, that's a separate piece of property. Okay, there's a property line between the, build, the, the building there and that piece of property. So there is- Where the so, driveway is probably? Yeah, yeah. So, and I actually, and, and actually, 
if you look at that, if you look at the site plan that we just went through for them to put that new building, yeah, there's actually a lot line changed there in order yeah. to make the grading and everything on on that lot. So, so, so that so that separate lot having been used to, for storage for a long time may have some grandfather's uh, some level of previous permission or something. The other side with the cranes, not so much. That that's completely all new. Completely. It's real new. Okay, so also is that you know, a separate lot too, or that, is that part of the lot? Rumor has it that guy's found another place to go with all that equipment, and he's going to move it out. But that's been going on for a few months now, and he hasn't gone yet. So, uh, <laughs> hey, now you're up to date. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it, it, it they put up a fence <coughs> to put storage equi uh, equipment behind. Now they got. Cranes behind they it. Put the cranes up a, is, you can see yeah. the cranes on top of it. They put up a six foot fence and they put a thirty foot crane behind right. it. Right, exactly. That's what I'm that's what I'm talking about. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> you know, it's ridiculous. And and, and the, the stuff that was supposed and the to be behind was the not, fence. The fencing was not for equipment, the fencing was for storage, storage of materials. materials. And that material is out on the side where you can see it now. And or in front of the building. Well, did they know that the, the stuff that's on the ground that's in on the walk in front of the building is allowed? Yeah. That was in there, agree, and what Original. they were like. I think yeah. sewer is yes. going to come solve that whole problem. Well, <laughs> it's it's nice. so perfect sure. lot right on We lost Main that. We don't, that's the only hardware store we got left in town. I'm not saying take with the hardware store. I mean, well, that's the only real hardware store. Allowed. You got, you got, yeah. Morty had Lover, but they're not a real hardware store anymore. Well, they're a lumber company. They, and they yeah. have all what they what they should have. That's right. They got, they got what takes care of the contractor. Yeah. Not sure. that they didn't want to. They did have, if you recall, they were here <clears throat> yeah. for a special permit, and then 2008 happened. Yeah. Well, they when they when they um, when we lost the other hardware store, that they, North uh, Running Hardware up here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jolly really uh, really expanded his store quite a bit to, he did. to pick up the slack. So he did. so he's so I think I think as a business, he's a valuable asset to the town. Very much. Well, he's, he's a great he's, store. He's he he done the whole like store. Too. Yeah. He doesn't like the rule follow. Yeah, now that's the problem that Jerry was having. He says, he, he, when, while he's talking to him, he says, yep, you're exactly right. Yep, you're right, Jerry. This is you're correct. And Jerry walks out the door and he doesn't do anything. So that was his complaint. But um, He doesn't He doesn't rule follow at all. So anyway, he's, but, just, but just so you know, there, there's, the left side definitely is, but I think it's, it's going to self-solve to some extent. And then... Uh, we got to do something with the right side. Yeah, but, but can we and do we? I mean, that's the question, so. Well. Jerry and I are going to be going out on the site with um, their attorney. We're going to be walking the site. At, their, at, the, at the owner's request, we're going to be showing them, looking with the site plan and saying, this is where you can have storage. This is where you can't. This is where there's an issue. They're, you know, we're mm -hmm. going to be talking it through with them on Thursday. Yep, so. yep. Um, more, more to come on, the, on that, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, anything else, Daniel, on zoning board stuff? Um, no, that was all I had for Z. Do you have so. a, anything on a planning update? Um, yes, let me see what we haven't already talked about. Talked about. Oh, I just wanted to let you know the housing services office, um, as I had mentioned, and we also worked it into our budget, we were changing to a, a consultant only model. And so, um, Answer Advisory had been the successful, um, you know, uh, agency to respond to the RFP, and uh, they were awarded the contract. We had our first kickoff meeting with them today. They seem really, really capable, really knowledgeable. Good. So, um, that's going well so far. I have a feeling we're going to be offered um, quite a bit more in, in terms of housing services and so forth than, than we were before. They just seem really knowledgeable. Um, the application for um, approval for the eight new affordable units at Martin's Landing um, has been prepared by Pulte. They've given it to us. Um, it's going to be moving on to the select board at their next meeting uh, for signature. Uh, there's um, uh, once it reaches that point, the entire application goes to DHCB, and then they will either uh, tell us we need changes and it may have to come back for signature, or they might accept it as it is, and then we will be able to get those units counted on the inventory. Um, and so that's good news. Um, in case you hadn't heard, but I think you have, the ability to have remote meetings has been extended through March 2023. Just wanted to mention that. Not that we usually do remote meetings, but just in case. Um, let's see, a couple projects we have coming in soon, uh, 25 Maple Road, um, for the same 
thing, basically, that 20 Maple Road came in for a few years back. Um, started off as a determination of access, kind of morphed into what became a subdivision application because it was on a reported subdivision. So we will probably be asked to look at that soon. Um, town Council is already involved because Jerry and I both um, know that there are issues with access and zoning that, that need to be looked at for, for that. Who's the proponent? Uh, Mr. Smith is the proponent. Um, so yeah, so we're talking about, we're, we're getting back into this grandfathered access thing. Yes. So I, I I think it will be treated the same way that 20 Maple Street was treated with the need to come in to approve a subdivision and, and street improvements. But I, I will wait to hear from the yeah. council before I tell you that for sure. But that, that should be coming in soon. But if we're coming off the one that was just done, the one the one that was just done was only, is, is I think, it, did we actually get 21 feet or did we only get 18 on that? So we can't ask to widen the roadway. We do know that because um, it was shown as a 12 foot right of way in the subdivision plan. So we are not gonna be able to request that, but we can request paving, we can request- But is, is, it, is, it, is it a I 20 foot could. layout there? I'm sorry? Is, is there a 20 foot layout? In, because that, that was the, the wood lots over there, so- Well, what was shown on the subdivision plan was only 12 feet. Oh, okay. If there is actually more room, there, there is more room in some areas, but there, not yeah, if, I thought we couldn't so, ask them to, to go and get- uh, We can't ask for easement. For that's what I'm saying. But if it's on his property, mm -hmm. we can make him widen it to a, to a wider road. Correct? We can ask him to. I think so. We can ask. We can ask. But well, here's the thing. I wonder. I wonder. You know. I mean, the, one of the things we we ran into before was the fire department came down and said, "Listen, 18 feet, got to have it. That's or it's unsafe." So I'm wondering. You know, they can't pass two truck. They can't pass two vehicles on twelve foot of road. But yeah. I think they can't. We can't really deny access to a lot that's been shown already on approved subdivision and has been reported. So yeah. I, I think we're a little bit limited with with a situation like this. With you know, hundred. Well, we can beg. I'm sorry. <laughs> we can beg. We can beg. Sure, sure. What we can do is we, do we, anything. We can, we can appeal to this to the fair to safety. You know, really. At least the road got paid. I mean, up to a point, the road did get paid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we couldn't even make them do that, but they did that anyway. Did it. They did well, that for their own good. We we did require the paving, yeah. but then the we contributed to it. Got no, the building permit got issued even without the paving, but then later on the, the paving was done. Yeah, the paving got done. That's really that's yeah. all that. It, 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 it missed somehow didn't get on the building permit. I think what happened was the building permit was pending for so long that the town didn't do their part in terms of the grading that they had agreed right, to. Right, so to I grade think that, yeah. the permit has to be issued. Uh -huh. Anyway, that was yeah. a long time ago, but yes, we might be getting the same thing again soon. So. A long time ago. And then 146 through 150 Park Street, we should be getting an application soon. Uh, the conservation agent and I met with um, the, uh, the developer's team uh, recently to just talk about some preliminary things prior to their submittal, they're almost ready to, to, to submit that, so we should be seeing that soon, which is great. Um, and, cool. oh, I just wanted to let you know, our the town engineer, John Clifel, is uh, leaving uh, for another position in his uh, hometown, Salem, New Hampshire, so just wanted to mention it. I know there were some things bummer. that have been, I know, yeah. I know, real bummer. A loss. Yeah, real loss, for sure. Uh, um, town engineer, you said? Yeah. Must have bust his job. Five years, yeah. yeah. Since my story left. Must have bust his chops too much. Hmm? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, he's got a long way to travel. If he can stay home, I can understand that. Yeah. That is a long way every day. So I did want to mention that too because we were given a draft of the corridor study that um, we had been working together on for, for Route 28. And I know I mentioned it a while back, but I wanted John to get his eyes on it before we actually really discussed it at a meeting in case he wanted any changes to be made. Um, but now I'm thinking, you know, with, with him wrapping things up over the next few weeks, he may not have a lot of time to devote to it. So maybe I'll just put it on an agenda. We'll talk about it anyway. I can give you the basics of it, but there are aspects of it. I mean, it really is an engineering study and I, it would be really helpful to have, you know, time engineer's perspective. And, you know, it, the study is not, it's not necessarily a strong recommendation for here's what you should do with Route 28, but what it is is a breakdown of here are a lot of things you could do with Route 28, and if you do, here will be the impacts of each one of them. Well, so it's, it's up to you to figure out 
which yeah. direction you want to take. So I can put that on a future agenda. What's that called, Daniel? That, that was the, um, it was the Route 28, it was a traffic study. It was basically a corridor study. For yeah, it was a corridor study for Main Street. Yeah, it yeah. was the um, town meeting appropriation from right. Okay. Is that we're talking about a roundabout or something in the middle and try to kid ease this hunt? No, that was that was that was, was an overpass. Bar things. They wanted an overpass. So you could go over did. things. Oh. Did they, did they look at that? <laughs> they might have because yeah. you know if we'd only learn how to use them, they do work well. Yeah. I mean, I we think just don't want to learn how to use them in this country. They looked at options for all for all seven of the intersections. So um, it's interesting, yeah. and I'll, you know I'll put it on the agenda. Just. Bearing in mind that I haven't really had a chance to like talk about it in depth with John, so I don't have like a strong recommendation. They got the what's he leaving? Um, in August. I can't so give it like a month. That's not bad. So I'm sure David, uh, Mike is already out looking, right? I, I don't know if it's in post. I hope it's in post. <laughs> it's only the town engineering. Yeah. But yeah, I I'm assuming, assuming if it hasn't been posted, it will be. So, That's all I have. Okay. He's not here to ask. So. <laughs> we'll leave that to you girls. To I'll, find, I'll find you, G women. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Is that it? <laughs> Pardon? I'll look at Okay. <laughs> that's all. Okay. I think that's it. Okay. I think we're good. All right. Thank you. Thank yeah. you.